The Redmi K50 Pro is one of the first smartphones in the world to be powered by MediaTek's first 4 nanometer processed node technology driven chipset, the Dimensity 9000. But how does it stack up against its greatest rival, Qualcomm's 4 nanometer run Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, as well as Google's 5 nanometer run Tensor chip and Apple's 5 nanometer run A15 Bionic CPU in not one, not two, not three, but four different benchmark runs where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score, and frames per second. All devices have been updated to their latest available software updates, that being Android 12 on the five Android devices on the left and iOS 15.4 on the iPhone. I have the Snapdragon variants of the Galaxy S22 Ultra and S22 Plus, so they're both rocking Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset. The Honor Magic 4 Pro is running the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset. The Redmi K50 Pro, the new Dimensity 9000 chip, which actually has a higher core clock speed than the three Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 powered smartphones here. And it has a higher clock speed than Google's Tensor chip found inside the Pixel 6 Pro. But the iPhone 13 Pro Max has the highest clock speed here at 3.23 gigahertz with its A15 Bionic chipset. The Redmi K50 Pro is the only one out of the bunch here that is using the new LP DDR5X RAM modules as opposed to the LP DDR5 RAM modules found inside the two Samsung devices, Honor and the Google Pixel, while the iPhone is sticking to LPDDR4X RAM. The S22 Plus is rocking a Full HD Plus display. The iPhone and the Honor sit somewhere between QHD and Full HD, while the Redmi, Pixel, and S22 Ultra are all rocking WQHD Plus displays. All phones here can reach a maximum of 120 frames per second thanks to their 120 hertz displays. The only phones that utilize performance modes is the Honor Magic 4 Pro, so we're gonna be enabling it here, as well as the Redmi K50 Pro. We'll start things off with Antutu version 9.3 3.4 on the Android devices, that being 9.0.9 .9 on the iOS device. And then we'll be moving on to the CPU side of things to test out single and multi-core performance in Geekbench 5. And then we'll end off with 3D Mark Wildlife, but there's a catch since this time around, we're gonna be including 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme after running the regular Wildlife Bench to test out true performance at 4K. Does MediaTek's new flagship chipset run on four nanometer process node technology have what it takes to outperform some of the best chipsets around? in this extremely detailed benchmark test comparison. This is Technic, and without further ado, let's find out. We're gonna kickstart things off here by checking the battery percentage at the start of the test. We will compare this at the end of the test to see how much each device has drained in terms of milliamp hours per minute. We're also gonna be using an infrared heat reading gun over here. We're sitting at around 20 degrees in Celsius in terms of room temperature and testing out all devices at the start which have been sitting idle for a few hours now. They're sitting around 25, 30 degrees in Celsius at the start. We'll compare this during each interval after each benchmark we run through. Kickstarting things off here with Antutu and do bear in mind that the start temps aren't really relevant since we haven't run any heavy tests yet in terms of temperature. But just in case you're wondering, the Redmi is sitting at a higher room temperature than all the other devices and the S22 Plus is sitting the lowest with 25 degrees Celsius. In Antutu version nine, we kickstarted things off with Swordsman over here, a new addition as opposed to Antutu version eight. Moving on to Refinery over here, which is stuck the same as we saw in version eight. And I know many of you are saying you can't really compare benchmarks between iOS and Android devices, especially when it comes to Antutu, since the Android devices are running OpenCL and GL APIs as well as Vulkan, whereas the iOS device, that being the iPhone 13 Pro Max with its A15 Bionic chipset, is using a Metal API. Now, while the two are different, pretty much like two different engines inside a car, we can't help but still compare. At the end of the day, there's many people that want either the best Android device around or the best iOS device around. And it is safe to say that Apple's King does do a fairly good job in these benchmarks, especially with Antutu version nine, since they have actually kind of, well, the company itself, Antutu, have really tapped into what iOS has to offer with Metal API rendering and have optimized it more for the software and hardware from the new iPhone 13 Pro Max and the A15 Bionic chip. So we'll have to wait and see how it stacks up against these Android beasts over here. We just ran through Terracotta Soldiers and now moving on to some screen refresh rates over here. Like I said, all of them have 120 Hertz refresh rate panels, though the Xiaomi, the Redmi that is, is fixed at 120 and the Samsung can't go that low, only as low as 48 Hertz. The other devices can range between either one or 10 all the way up to 120 Hertz thanks to the LTPO displays. Finishing off Antutu over here 
with the added video CTS and added video decoding. The iPhone finished first and that is why I tested its temperature out now and not when all of them finished, just so that it's more accurate to test out the temperature right as the phone finishes the test, rather than when testing them all out when they all finish. And the iPhone did end off the coolest after Antutu with 37.5 degrees in Celsius, only adding 11.6, whereas the hottest was the Redmi K50 Pro with 47.2 degrees in Celsius and added a whopping 18.1 degrees in Celsius. Now we were hoping that the Dimensity 9000 chipset would be cooler than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipsets, but it doesn't really seem to be the case. The iPhone finished Geekbench version 5 off quick over here and got 39.4 degrees in Celsius after Geekbench, adding just 1.9. The Pixel didn't get the hottest, but it added the most at 5.5, and the hottest was the Honor Magic 4 Pro, which got all the way up to 50 degrees in Celsius, but it didn't quite add as much as that of the Pixel, it is still the hottest. Now we're starting off 3D Mark Wildlife over here, just the regular one minute wildlife bench. Now the reason why I'm testing out this and Extreme after this is because this and Wildlife Extreme are essentially the exact same tests, but the one is rendering at 1440p 2K resolution, QHD plus like most of these panels are sitting at, which is the one that we're starting with now. So the frame rates are pretty high, but you gotta remember that the iPhone is actually pretty much capping at 60 FPS when running a 3D Mark, this benchmark in particular. So we're gonna be testing out the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme as well, since the frame rates will be lower and the cap won't matter because they sit around 15 FPS and moving on to 3D Mark Wildlife, as you can see over here, it renders at 4K. Now, while none of these displays actually support 4K, we're gonna get a better understanding of which frame rate is higher when comparing the iPhone 13 Pro Max to the other Android devices over here, since the cap doesn't matter, since the test can't quite hit even more than 20 frames per second on even the best of the best flagship devices around. We're wrapping off a 3D Mark Wildlife right now, Wildlife Extreme that is, and we're gonna be testing out the temperature after running Wildlife and Wildlife Extreme to see how hot they get after running back-to-back -back Wildlife tests. We're wrapping up Wildlife over here and it looks absolutely stunning, probably one of my favorite looking benchmarks around Around. so much happening in just a one minute time frame and wrapping things off and getting to temperatures the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra only added 0.8 over there whereas the Honor added the most at 4.3 and the Redmi added the least not adding anything ending off with 49.4 degrees in Celsius and when it comes down to start to end temperatures the Honor ended off the hottest at 54.3 degrees in Celsius and added the most at 25.8 whereas the iPhone remained the coolest at a peak of 42.9 degrees in Celsius at the end and only added 17 degrees in Celsius. Now, while the iPhone is impressive, I'm actually pretty impressed with the S22 Ultra since it traded blows in terms of temperatures when compared to the iPhone, even though it has a pretty hot chipset inside it, that being the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And when it comes to battery drain, while the Honor Magic 4 Pro did drain the most at 11%, it has a pretty small battery when compared to that of the Samsung and Redmi and Pixel over here. Nevertheless, the Honor did still drain the most at 11% and had the highest milliamp hour per minute drainage of 24.1. The lowest was the iPhone since it did drain by 9%, the same as the Pixel and the S22 Ultra, but since it has a significantly smaller battery at 4,352 milliamps, it got a much better milliamp hour per minute drain of just 18.7. And when it comes to Redmi's K50 Pro running the new Dimensity chipset, it drained almost as much as the worst here. And getting to the first set of results, that being Antutu version 9, the Redmi blew all of them out the water with a whopping 1,600,000 16,362 points. Second place, not too far behind, surprisingly enough, is the S22 Ultra, which actually beat the Honor Magic 4 Pro and S22 Plus, but not by too much. Fifth place, we had the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and dead last, we have the Pixel 6 Pro. When it comes to single core in Geekbench version 5, first place is no doubt awarded to the iPhone 13 Pro Max with that wonderful A15 Bionic chipset. It got 1,747 points, which is a ton higher than second place here, being the Redmi with 1,301 points. Third place being the Honor, not too far off the Redmi, I must add, with two different chipsets. Then in fourth, we have the Samsung. A fifth, we have the Pixel. And sixth over here, strangely enough, we have the S22 Plus, though the bottom three scores are pretty similar. And when it comes to multi-core scores, things switch up a little bit over here. We have first place still the iPhone with 4,832 points, but not too far behind that is the Redmi with a crazy 4,175 points, which is a significantly higher amount when compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipsets over here that being the S22 Plus in third place and the Honor Magic 
4 Pro in fourth place, fifth place the S22 Ultra, and dead last, once again, the Pixel 6 Pro. Now, when it comes to 3D Mark Wildlife, not the extreme, just the regular, we have first place getting awarded to the Honor Magic 4 Pro with an FPS count of 60.4 and a high score of 10,082 points, which is higher than anything else pretty much I've ever seen, but it could reach a maximum frames per second of 76, whereas the iPhone that came in second place with an average of 58.3 FPS had a higher minimum FPS of 41, but it could only reach 61 max because the benchmark is capping the device and it can't reach higher than 60, so it probably would have had a higher result. Nevertheless, that's in second place. Third is the S22 Plus, oddly enough, which is significantly higher than fifth place S22 Ultra. In between those is fourth place being the Redmi with a disappointing 7,643 points with that new Dimensity chipset, and dead last, no doubt, the Pixel 6 Pro. Now, when it comes to wildlife extremes, things have definitely switched up with the iPhone getting crowned first over here with an average FPS of 17.7 as opposed to the 15.6 FPS on the Honor Magic 4 Pro which beat it in the regular wildlife test and that is because the cap doesn't matter over here since they're all sitting around 15-20 frames per second since the benchmark was rendering at 4k. So the iPhone blew the Honor out of the water over here and the Honor did significantly better than the rest of the devices here. So I guess it's safe to say that Phones are coming close to what Apple has to offer in terms of their Bionic chipsets, but they're not quite there yet. At least the Dimensity does outperform the new Snapdragon in some ways, but it still gets just as hot and drains just as quick when it comes to battery. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. This is Tech Nick, and I'll catch you in the next one.